We actually do individual risk assessments for where, uh, where the work is required. A an example might be um, a specialist coming in um, as a locum to replace another specialist so that specialist services can continue to, to occur and so that we don't exhaust our specialist uh, healthcare providers who are very few. Um, and so in those cases, we do individualized risk assessments and then uh, determine uh, if that person Person should work uh, based on the risk of the the travel associated risk and then under what conditions and how and often that involves um, maximizing virtual vir virtual care making sure that personal protective equipment is worn and for any contact vigilant self-monitoring for temperature and respiratory symptoms and uh, means like that okay thank you and Marin avec uh, Aurore Borel Êtes-vous là? Oui, je suis là. Bon. Oui. C'est vous? Donc, euh, dans le fait que... Euh, dans les autres régions touchées, le port du masque que vous demandez, est-ce qu'il y a des mesures spéciales qui sont prises pour euh, assurer qu'on va avoir les approvisionnements où ils sont avec des infectants et des masques pour les personnes qui continuent à travailler avec le public? I think that was a question about mask use for people continuing to work. As a city, city correct. In the other uh, the other regions and countries that are touched more than us, wearing a mask is recommended. Do we have the resources, the supplies here to provide masks and disinfect them to the, to the workers that are still working with the public at restaurants and, and health workers and daycare workers? So the question is, uh, do you mind if I speak, uh, speak to it in English and then in French? Um, and, and the question, uh, I believe, is about supplies of masks. Do we have enough masks for where we recommend masks for, um, for people who are advised to, um, to be uh, self-monitoring self at work? Um, and in those um, conditions, uh, under those circumstances. So, so the general supply of uh, personal protective equipment is, um, is an urgent question. Um, at, at present, we are in good supply and we are working with uh, um, partners around the country on making sure that we have uh, contingencies for supply. There are multiple layers to that. Certainly for the, for the, the time being under our um, are, are when we do risk assessments and advise mask use, for, uh, particularly for healthcare settings. Uh, yes, uh, I'm confident of the, of the supplies. Donc, c'était pour les masques dans les situations où uh, on est conseillé de continuer de, de travail, on est permis de continuer de travail. Uh, uh, avec un masque et est-ce qu'on a assez de, de, de on est fourni avec assez de, de masques uh, en particulier et je, je veux dire que pour le moment uh, oui uh, mais c'est aussi pour clarifier que c'est pas dans toutes les situations qu'un masque est uh, recommandé uh, mais c'est uh, c'est surtout dans les situations de uh, de contact uh, de uh, de uh, on, on peut dire le, le frontline healthcare donc le soin de santé uh, direct où uh, un masque est, uh, um, est, est conseillé uh, et enforcé um, pour continuer de, de travailler donc uh, pour les moments on est bien mais c'est une question de aussi nationale uh, et uh, entre des uh, des régions pour discuter tous les niveaux de réponse donc c'est uh, c'est une, une réponse qui on est activement en travail avec notre collègue à organisation de mesures d'urgence pour uh, fournir les, les Les, les, les supplies sufficients pour maintenant et pour le futur. Ok, euh, merci. Pour, pour dire la même chose qu'on a dit euh, pour les garderies en, en français, c'est ça? Donc, euh, ben... Mesure de porte 
actually get them the right of the grocery worker or the daycare worker of the restaurant. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so normal, we would have to do uh, on on a bien de see normalement c'est les situations que on a assez de gens pour pas avoir les personnes sous euh, donc donc il donc ça c'est c'est une question très individualisée parce que normalement on a assez de des de personnels euh, que on n'a pas besoin de mettre les personnes dans des services comme ça dans des situations de de de, de fournir des services essentiels donc euh, c'est plutôt dans le domaine de santé de de de, de, de santé où on a il il faut euh, entre man, maintenir euh, des personnels et donc dans les situations de, de santé euh, pas principale on on veut pas aller trop loin dans dans les autres services parce que normalement on a assez de personnel que si quelqu'un est en à quarantaine la personne suive les mesures de quarantaine Thank you. Merci, Marine. Um, we have one last question from CKRW, and then I believe that'll be the end of the question period. Uh, Tim? Yeah. Oh, that's all. Hang on. And I'll, and I'll step back, too, and uh, speak louder. Uh, are we getting closer to the point of the ordering of closure of non-essential businesses? Uh, today is the day for the closure of personal establishments. Uh, getting questions about, you know, why is Better Bodies still open? There's also a lot of Yukoners. I know mining has been deemed an essential business, but a lot of Yukoners are concerned about Victoria Gold still being open, even though they've put special provisions in place. Are we getting closer to that mandated closure of non-essential businesses? Every every question has to be posed against what is the actual risk, uh, the question of further closures. So where, what is the actual risk compared to where we are in the, in the epidemic, and what can we keep going? And uh, I, I can tell you that these are critical questions. These are these are not things to be uh, flippant over. Is there enough? Are measures in place sufficient to protect uh, communities, to protect vulnerable people, to to protect from transmission of COVID? If those measures in place are sufficient, then there's no hurry to close things down. Uh, it it is. Uh, um, it goes back to my earlier comments about maintaining that balance but th th again we are very closely working with uh, with the with the mines and uh, with the, uh, the the medical uh, operations plan that each mine has and in uh, even this morning and later today very active conversations about looking okay can operations continue um, in a safe way and that's going to vary for the the location uh, the mine the type of transport um, and and at the same time there are there are severe consequences to closing down a mine versus keeping it going so again getting the right balance for where we are now and the same goes for retail um, many businesses have decided to close down purely out of um, a need to close down for economic reasons and each one is literally heartbreaking and literally another Another, uh, it means more people laid off, more people without income, more people looking for support. Um, e each one of these closures has tremendous consequences. So, again, let's not go too far, too fast. We have time to think these out, and we have time to think about the next steps that we might need and the right timing for that. Um, there was a a bond spiel in Edmonton, say uh, it was March 11th. There were a lot of healthcare givers there, and I guess it's over 50 people have test or were in for testing. It's over 10 have tested positive. Do we know if any of our physicians, clinicians, uh, healthcare givers were there? 
so the, the question about uh, a particular bond spiel in, in Edmonton, and w what happens is that n notifications are, um, are taken for any event where COVID has been identified. The public health management is notification to public of, of the event. So I can't comment on that particular event, um, but we have had uh, events where Yukoners have been notified as part of public health process and then uh, told uh, that they, they are a potential contact, they're in conversation with uh, Yukon Communicable Disease Control, a conversation about the need for uh, self-monitoring. Uh, uh, in those cases, generally it's strict self-monitoring and then uh, assessment and testing if symptoms develop. Well, just wondering if it's uh, decreased the uh, available people in the field to help fight. The Sorry, decreased the available people in the field to... Yeah, I was wondering if they were there. And obviously they would have come back and taken themselves out or indeed tested positive, I don't know. But what I'm concerned about is, were health caregivers there and did they come back and now they're out of the picture? So again, I, I'm not going to I'm, I'm not going to comment on individual uh, scenarios. The, the public health management is robust and it works.